In this video, we will consider the connections between probability and coincidence. So let's consider a, 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 an example of an event that uh, many people consider to be coincidental, which is winning the lottery. All right, so let's calculate the probability um, of winning. And here's the scenario. Uh, we have a lottery in which the winner is chosen, chosen by drawing six balls at random from a drum containing 52 numbered balls, numbered 1 through 52. Okay, and then we just need... Uh, the six numbers, our six numbers, to match the six winning numbers. Okay, and this, this can happen in any order. Um, it doesn't have to be uh, the same order as, as the one in which the numbers were picked. Okay, so uh, there's, uh, there are too many different um, possibilities here to list them all out. So that's a clue to use some sort of a counting rule. And so the problem is that we um, are picking six balls at random from a group of 52 and they're all different. All right, so this should sound like something to you. Okay, so notice it's not an arrangement. Um, it's just choosing a group of things. Uh, we are choosing from the same pool of numbers and there's no repetition uh, because it doesn't say anything about putting a ball back in for it to be repicked. Okay, so if that were a possibility, you know, the six numbers could be all threes or something like that. Um, so those are all of the criteria for a combination. So we can use the, the NCR formula. Okay, so the number of possible um, six ball combinations would be 52 choose six. And that's 20,358,520. Okay, so the chances that uh, your six numbers match the six winning numbers is one out of that number of possibilities. And so that's uh, less than one in 20 million. And that's really too small to describe as a percentage. So we'll just leave it at that. Okay, um, now notice it's not six out of because we're, we're counting, we already counted the groups of six balls. All right, so this is not the total number of uh, balls or anything like that. It's the number of groups of six. Okay, so yours is one specific group of six. Now that's a really small probability, so I think that's what makes people think that, um, you know, that that it's a coincidence if they win or something like that. But um, keep in mind there's a difference between you personally winning and someone winning. All right, so uh, someone will win the lottery, so it's it's certain that's, that there will be a winner, um, but it's not at all certain that you are the winner. And the truth there can be stated just in a slightly different way. Um, coincidences are bound to happen. Although a particular coincidence, like you winning, may be highly unlikely, some similar coincidence may be extremely likely or even certain to occur. In, this, in general, this means that coincidences should be expected to occur with their likelihoods dictated by the laws of probability. And I think that this would be just an appropriate time to acknowledge that uh, those laws themselves are put into place and sustained by the Lord. So, you know, if you do believe in coincidence, um, just be careful to root that back to the, um, the creator of coincidence and the laws of probability. And know that um, nothing is outside of uh, what is known to the Lord and um, nothing is surprising to him or, or anything like that. So if you are a uh, believer in good luck, then uh, it kind of takes the fun out of it for you. So I'm sorry, but um, if you want to be consistent with a biblical worldview, um, then it's, it's good to just make that acknowledgement. Okay, so let's look at an example of um, something that people uh, are, are surprised by when they consider coincidence. And uh, this was the chapter opener if you read that. So uh, what are what's the probability... Um, that at least one person in a class of 25 students has the same birthday as you? And then what is the probability that some pair of students in the class share the same birthday? So notice that those are uh, not the same thing, okay? And this is, this is the same as the difference between you personally winning the lottery versus um, someone having the, the winning combination that matches. And this is actually a famous problem and it's, it's kind of intriguing, so I think this one's worth going through. So the first question uses uh, a rule that I, I mentioned before we would come back to, 
and that is the at least once rule. All right, so we're, we're wanting to know the probability that at least one person has the same birthday as you. Okay, so we can find that by starting with one and subtracting the probability that somebody does not have your birthday. And then we raise that to the exponent. That's the number of trials. All right, or in this case, we could say um, the number of, of other people in the class. So the trial could be um, like you go to each person in cl the class, each of the other 24 people, and you see if your birthdays match, okay? And that's the trial. All right, so that's 24. All right, well, what's the probability um, that someone does not have your birthday? Okay, well, there are 365 days in a year, and one of them is your birthday, so the probability that uh, they don't have your birthday is 364 out of 365. And that's about uh, 0.936. Okay, so there's a pretty good probability there. And then subtracting, uh, we get the probability is 0 0.064. Okay, so the probability that at least one person has your particular birthday is about 6.4%. Now the second question asks us to find the probability that some pair of students from the class of 25 shares the same birthday. It doesn't have to be you, just any any two. All right, so this is still an at least. So it's the probability that at least uh, at least one pair of people have a shared birthday. Okay, and we can find that using uh, that same little trick with one minus. It's one minus the probability that there are no shared birthdays. So let's focus in on this probability and we'll try to find that, okay? So if we look at the first two students, then the probability that they don't share a birthday is 364 out of 365. So that's the same as when we, we computed the probability uh, that somebody had the same birthday as you, okay? So there's a, a 1 in 365 chance that those two students match, and then the rest of the year, not a shared birthday. Um, then we add on to that, okay? So that's two students, all right? Uh, for the third student, we want to compare with those two. What's the probability that adding in a third person um, would still, you know, that third person would still not be sharing a birthday, Okay, so the first two have different birthdays, two different days of the year. So that means that the, the third person uh, would need to have a birthday on one of the other 363 days of the year. And there's a 363 out of 365 chance that that birthday does not match. Right, so now we're up to three different people with three different birthdays. The fourth person would need to have a birthday on one of the other 362 days of the year and so on and so forth, okay? And you're gonna do this um, with, with everybody. And by the time you get to the uh, 25th person, um, we've used up uh, 24 birthdays already. All right, so 365 minus 24 is 341. Okay, so there are 341 options left for that last person, okay? And then let's make this uh, this computation, all right? so. In the numerator, you could uh, you could multiply this by hand. This is 364 times 363 times 362, and then you would keep multiplying all the numbers in between, and you would stop at 341, right? You could also use a factorial. So let's say we were doing this with uh, 250 students instead of 25, then you wouldn't want to write out all of those numbers, right? So notice that that's just 364 factorial divided by 340 factorial. We want to get rid of everything after 341. Okay, and then in the denominator, everything is 365, but we did this for 25 different people. Okay, and the the first fraction here, this represented the the first two people, 
the next one was the first three, and so forth. So we have 24 different fractions, okay? Because we're, we're comparing birthdays from one person to 24 other people. Okay, and if you work that out, uh, that turns out to be about uh, 0.431, okay? So that would be about a 43% chance um, that no birthdays match. So going back to our original question, okay, we are trying to find the probability that there's at least one pair of, of people um, that share a birthday. Okay, so we want to do 1 minus 0.431, and that's uh, 0.5. Five, six, nine. So there's a much better chance of this happening. Okay, about a 57% chance uh, that, that some group of two people will share the same birthday. Now, if you're interested, the, the more famous version of this question um, asks how many people you need in the group in order to have a better than 50% chance that some group of two of them will have the same birthday. Okay, so you can play around with this. Uh, just change the 25 and, um, you know, trial and error, so it, see if you can go any smaller, all right? Can you have a group of um, 24 people and still greater than 50% chance and see how low you can go? And I want to leave you with one um, final example, and I, I won't calculate this one, but uh, this, this could be a fun one to try. Um, this was on a, a BuzzFeed article that one of my, my friends sent me, so it was one of those um, clickbait ones where it's it's like you know 17 cool amazing facts that you didn't know were true um, so you, you kind of have to research the math on these and and see if it's a trustworthy source or not um, so I looked into this one and, and I'll leave this up to you to decide um, but here's the claim every time you shuffle a deck of cards you are likely the first person in the history of the universe to create that exact sequence okay so you actually do know enough math now to figure this out Right, so think about um, shuffling a deck of cards. Uh, you can calculate how many sequences there are, right? And then um, think about, <laughs> you know, ha how many uh, how many times a deck of cards has been shuffled. So maybe you want to do um, an order of magnitude es estimation here, right? And and think about all the different factors and approximations you would need to get the number of shuffles that have taken place. And um, then think about the difference between um, probability of any two people getting a matching sequence of cards versus you shuffling the deck of cards and having your, your shuffle match somebody else's sequence. All right, so decide which of those this problem is asking about. Okay, um, have fun with that. I'll leave you with that.